for the invitation to be here with you. Um, it is um, good to always be in the midst of um, people who care about children, and uh, that's exactly uh, who I am and from where I stem and everything that I do. Um, I have grandchildren that are part of the 30,000 students that are in Montgomery Public Schools. Um, my children graduated through Montgomery Public Schools. So um, I value this place. I value the work that goes on in this place. Um, so I'm privileged to be able to stand here and even say that, even share that. Um, I, I'm grateful that I'm talking to people who have um, gone to school. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you know what it's all about. Uh, I'm happy to see some young people who have gone even more recently. And I'm saying that because uh, over 41 years and eight months, um, things, have, things have changed quite a bit. Uh, nothing um, is, I guess the only thing that has remained the same is the fact that we as a uh, city, county, sti are still obligated to do for children uh, what was done for us. And with that, uh, there is a responsibility. Um, I realize that, uh, yes, I am retired um, almost a week, one week today, uh, but I still have a responsibility to the children in this community. And that's the one thing that I have tried to encourage when speaking with people anywhere, that you have a responsibility. And um, this responsibility is not just uh, to your own, it's to anybody's uh, and everybody's uh, because it's all of us and all of them that are going to impact the rest of our lives and theirs. And we want them to survive. We want our children to survive. So I was going to give you some background, but it's already been given regarding the fact that we do have 30,000 students, about 4,000 employees, um, that and these employees are both certified and classified, about 2,000 teachers, uh, and the rest are supports, bus drivers and secretaries and, and you name it. And, um, these people have been very hardworking folk uh, down through my years um, of working with various entities within this district. Uh, very dedicated and committed individuals who see the work um, with the same vision uh, that I have for um, making sure the children get what they need. As a matter of fact, um, I did messages quite frequently uh, to, to the staff, um, pleading with them on occasion to see these children as they would their own and to do for them what they would want done for their own. Um, and so that, uh, quite a number, took me at my word and joined me in doing that. Um, regarding the performance of Montgomery Public Schools, um, I, you know, when I look at us, and not at the big numbers and the published numbers, I see that I see where we have saved a lot of lives already. Um, I, I truly, and I, I tell staff, we save lives every day. Every day a life is saved through Montgomery Public Schools. But when you look at our academic performance, it has wavered over the years based on state assessments, based on which test and how long we keep that test in place. The longer the test is in place, the better the performance seems to grow. Uh, the start of every test always showed um, quite a decline uh, as children and administrators and teachers had to figure out exactly what was expected uh, of them. 
um, diverse population seem to have done better. Um, and uh, so that means that diversity seems to work. Our Asian and white student performance has been better than African American student performance. Hispanic students are inching ahead of African American students. In 2012, we, uh, we got some new standards. I mean, you heard of them as co um, common core standards. We, uh, our state deemed them uh, Alabama college and career ready standards. Um, so these standards came along in 2012 and, and they were introduced um, by um, core in essence, the math standards came first, and then the next year, the English language arts, and then the science standards. So we have these new standards, and they pretty much, when they came on the scene, unnerved a lot of individuals, uh, the teachers and parents and students, causing many uh, to have to come out of uh, comfort zones to do some new things. Uh, teachers had to teach differently and students are expected to learn differently and um, so this is still on the table as I as I see <coughs> along with those new standards came a new assessment the Alabama um, I'm sorry ACT Aspire came along with those standards um, in looking at what was going on across the country I noticed that there were states who had new standards who waited for three years before they offered an assessment of those standards, um, giving opportunity for teachers and parents and students to become knowledgeable about the expectations that were associated with them. And I truly thought that was a good idea. Um, but we got new standards in one year and we also assessed that very same year. And our students have not done very well on the ACT Aspire. And I know that you um, have heard about the fact of um, the ACT Aspire perhaps not being as aligned to those standards as we would want. In essence, teachers were teaching certain standards a certain way and they were being assessed in a different way. So uh, that came to be a little bit problematic and it wasn't all the standards and it wasn't at every level. I think the middle school level was where it really showed up the most. Um, when we received the standards and tested in that first year, our uh, state superintendent who was then Dr. Vice indicated to us that it was okay. You know, we're going to use this data to, um, as our baseline. And it, it would be for our benefit that we would take this baseline data and that we would chart our own path forward uh, based on the data. But then there were so many different <coughs> mandates that were happening along the way. Um, the failing schools reports uh, that went along with the Accountability Act that came out and forced those uh, scores right into uh, the media. The A3F report card. Uh, all of those things were factors that we uh, had to deal with. Our graduation rate did go from uh, 64 when I arrived to now about 80, so that's, that's pretty good, but it's not good enough. Um, our children um, can do better, I believe, and um, I think that time will show uh, that they can do. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, with I'm, I'm just giving you a little background because what I want you to do is be able to ask me questions um, about the topics that you want, want to discuss. Um, as it boils down, what we found was that our system was not reflecting a pretty picture overall. You know, our magnet schools, 
performed best. Uh, our students were diverse. Uh, student bodies performed better than those whose populations were not. Um, and back at the ranch, and all of you are aware of this, the business community is trying to create a new day, uh, fresh anointing, advancing economy, and um, of course the school system is a part of that. And so that has come to light. Um, and, and not just come to light, because the truth of the matter is, um, I was thinking back today, uh, a nation at risk. From that, from the Sputnik, uh, there came about a, a document called A Nation at Risk. And I wanted to share this with you. Um, the Sputnik <coughs> situation with, with Russia launching was in 1957. So I just wanted to tell you how far back this gap, and I want us to remember that term as we began to talk uh, about today. Uh, because truly, I want you to know that the gap is about as old as I am if I'm the oldest one in the room. Uh, but if you are, and you know who you are, then the gap is about as old as you are. So the gap has always been there. A nation at risk had put education on the nation agenda, that it catapulted education near to the top of the national political agenda, and that it started an ambitious and well-publicized elementary and secondary education reform that has already lasted for more than a quarter of a century. And this was written back in 2008. So, we're talking 35, 36 years in. Uh, we've gone from the Elementary and Secondary Education Act to No Child Left Behind. Now we're on ESSA. The fact that people have concerns about education and that gap um, continues. And I'm not certain um, if, well, I guess I can say that gap just keeps widening. That's why meetings like this are going to be very, very important to be not just once a week um, with a small group. They're going to have to happen with everybody. Because to get to the core of as to why the gap exists and what needs to be done about the gap is going to have to be the impetus behind everything that we do for and with children. So I, I just wanted to mention that piece. Um, you know, so I, I can remember in the mayoral race, every candidate um, used improving schools as the message. And uh, it, will all, it will continue to be that message if we continue to do business as usual. And our business, as usual, is not necessarily what an organization does, but it's what individuals do that will change the picture, will change the, the scene. Uh, the bottom line, all, all of our students are not making adequate academic prog progress according to state and federal assessments. Um, I say according to the assessments because I've already given you the truth of the word which says that children are progressing, but they're not making enough progress to reflect the kind of growth that is expected. Um, when you think about a um, four-year-old starting school, and um, just for a quick point of demonstration, there are children who start here as four-year-olds, and then there are children who start here as four-year-olds. And they're in the same class. And they are given content and processes and concepts. And this child moves along, but so does that child. And by the end of, um, by the time we get to an assessment, um, I think that child's going to do better than this child on, on the paper. 
So um, we've, we've got to realize that where a child starts is really, really, really important. You know, uh, President Obama went back and made a big emphasis on the zero to three. You know, we talk pre-K here. He went all the way, way back, zero to three. And I was in a conversation with some superintendents um, down in Miami, and the conversation was, look, we've got to, to get a hold on young pregnant mamas right. so that we can help them to know exactly what needs to happen with their children. So um, not just pre-K, uh, but we're talking zero to three and back. Uh, because again, I say to you that that gap is, uh, is there and widening. Um, in 2013, when I first came on as interim, State Superintendent Dr. Bice suggested